Hello, hello. Hiya. Hello, everyone. Hiya. Hello. Mm. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Hello, 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 hello. Power banks are a good idea when we have them. So we're waiting for people to power on. Come on, come on, hi. Yes, 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 come on, come on, let's power on. Where's your power bank, everyone? Come on, come on, come on. We're waiting for the uh, catalyst to come on. Hi, hi. It's an exciting day. Can't wait. Oh, yeah, yes. Um, the catalyst. You're going to ask to to come on. Can you, you're going to make a request and I bring you on. I'm so excited, really excited people to have one of my favorite persons um, with me today discussing issues that are so needed to be discussed um, as time. So I'm waiting for the catalyst to ask to be brought onto camera and then, um, and then we, we, we're ready to go. Yes, yes, get your friends coming on, everyone. Yes. Mm. Really excited about today. Where are you, bro? Hello. Hey, there you are. Then How are you? You're looking more like a rabbi with, with that beard, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, with all the white beard, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, the white and hair. The, I know, I know. How are you? <laughs> good, good. I'm fine, and you? Great to have you all online. And we're not going to have internet just messing about today. It's got to be okay where you are, where I am. Yeah, uh, well, we just speak it into, into the atmosphere that the internet, you know, will favor us today in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. I received that. So internet, you heard it, we decreed it, behave yourself. So um, the Catholics, it's so great to have you. I know how busy you are and um, just really... Um, I can't, I mean, I can't even say enough how excited I am. I think we share a passion that people really live their very best lives. And, um, and I, I just really have to commend you publicly, right? Um, I've been pretty much, pretty much like yourself. We're, we're authentic. We just like to, to, to just say it as it is. And um, I think that there is such um, urgency now for authenticity, um, the catalyst, because there's so much going on in our world, right? And um, we can't package anymore. <laughs> we just have to come to terms with the truth that our people are needing help. And um, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of disruption, really. Um, there's a lot of crisis. There's a lot of chaos. There's a lot of change. That's the reality. You know, and perhaps those that are expected to role model and those that are expected to explain, you know, the... The, the craziness, you know, in the world right now. Let's just use the street language because it really is crazy. You know, there's so much, you know, that has changed. And, and it's not like we're going back to the way things were. You know, change is our reality now. And uh, who better to talk to us about how to manage change? When I was thinking about, you know, the Becoming series, right? So here's how, you know, uh, the Lord curated it in me, that, we're just in the process of becoming, right? Yeah. And we're going to be as, we're really going to be who we are, as open as we can, so that we can help people, right? 
And my, my heart is always to have open conversations that are so authentic and real so people can find meaning right to what we're saying and people can come into reality of what you know they have heard if you're a christian right you have heard so many sermons when are they going to be your reality okay so now we are in a world that you know that is changing it is fast changing and it's not going to go back to what it was and and, and it's so critical that people know this so the the the, the catalyst i know uh, that you are a distiller right so you, you you're very good at distilling information and you're very good at you know uh formatting it which is very good you know so that people can you know then apply knowledge knowledge that is not applicable for me is is really waste and there is a lot of fragmentation fragmented knowledge a little bit here a little bit there and so people are not really coming into that that, that whole um, wholesomeness so this is my first kind of direction that um, we, we get, get people coming into. I have something that I call uh, the lounge that I do, and it's by invitation only. And it's, it's based on a John chapter 14, verse, 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 verse 2. In my father's house, mansion, there are many rooms. So you just come in relaxed. So um, tonight, um, yeah, so we just start this way, um, starting the conversation as people sign on that they come in relaxed. So, uh, so the my first kind of line of um, questioning direction is the catalyst with all your, with your experience from the past, right? Um, I'm sure you also have had to adjust things to accommodate the change, the major disruption. So, in your curriculum and um, in your training and in your teachings and in your exposure you would have been someone who has you know a first-hand uh, knowledge of the change that has come you know to the world and its impact on people's wellness mental wellness on people's mental wellness so uh, let's just have a, a bit of a chat about this um all right. Like a, a relaxed chat, a lounge chat, you know, about this, you know, the, the what your observation uh, in the last, you know, two years with COVID and all uh, every other thing that's happening in the world. All right. Thank you very much, uh, my sister. You know, it's really an honor and a privilege uh, to be on your platform and having conversations with you. And, you know, conversations with you are usually very They're very deep. Um, they're very <laughs> inspiring. Very inspirational and um, you know very transformational and then you know um, when when the right energy connects when the right frequencies connect when the right thoughts and the right desires and the right passion connects shifts are made and tonight I dare say that um, some in, in uh, unchangeable shifts are going to happen virtue of what people are going to hear and awesome. you know we're going to be speaking and some people are going to be hearing at certain dimensions and certain depths that is unfathomable and so you know speaking about the last uh, two or three years you know i believe the last two or three years uh, were ordained and they were ordained because um, of the chaos in the world and you know from biblical history when there's chaos, when there's wickedness, when there's catastrophe in the world, God pours it into existence. He's done it several times, right? Noah, you know, he did it. Um, you know, when the children of Israel, you know, um, when there was chaos in Egypt and, and, and they left and, and they were in the wilderness, a 40-day journey took 40 years. So it seemed like, you know, they were going around in circle. That was another disruption. And so we're at a time in history where God has paused, when God paused things for two years. And we were in a volatile world. We were in a very uncertain world. We were in a very complex world. We were in a very ambiguous world. We were in a very disruptive world. What, what the world now calls a vocal world. Volatile uncertain, complex, ambiguous, and disrupted world. Now, if we live in this world, right, then 
what do we need to do to one, survive, two, to thrive, three, succeed, and four, become significant. We can no longer live like things are normal because things are actually not normal. Mm -hmm. now, in this VUCAD world, we have to adopt a VUCAD strategy. So we live in a VUCAD world. How can we survive? How can we thrive? How can we succeed? And how can we become significant? We have to attack VUCAD with VUCAD. And so for the volatility, what we really need to revisit is our vision. So we give V for V. And when we're talking about vision, it's really scripture. The Bible says that without a vision, the people perish. And if mm -hmm. we look around the last three years, right? We're, we're, we're talking about people that have perished. We're talking about many businesses that have perished. We're talking about a lot of people that have lost their ability to generate you know, financial power and independence. So there's a lot that has been lost. And people need to revisit the reason why they exist. What are you living I like for? that. I like that. What, are you, what is your vision for existence? Is it, should you still be doing the same thing as you were doing? Now, interestingly, right, it is very important that we recognize this. And this is truth. That the person that you were before COVID was different from the person that you were during COVID and it's different from the person that you are now. So a lot of transition has happened with you. Now, if you were different before COVID, if you were different during COVID, if you are different now, that's three, three manifestations of you. So your vision before COVID would not work with your vision during COVID. And your vision during COVID will not work with your vision post-COVID. Okay. And so, you know, it you is know you're a thought person, right? You're a thought person. And there's a lot that um, you have already, you know, um, hit on, which is very important. Because like you said, I think that today is really a day of um, seismic shift for some people, right? There's something that you said I really want us to go deeper into because you know you said a lot and, and like i said you're a distiller and we want this um conversation to produce some you know thought leaders even because i i think i think the currency of thinking has been lost especially for us you know christians ecclesia uh people and this is a mind decade so people are not applying you know the the, the, the heads we are not applying themselves to thinking so you, you 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 talked about vision now and i want you to carry on on that trajectory but i want you to um uh catalyze, just just really catalyze this you know vision is a mental picture of where you're going and very often a lot of people don't have it they think they have it right so it's a mental you know picture of your future and it includes your past and your present so making that connection and that convergence you know finding that place of convergence in the mind where your past no matter how good it was bad it was you're that's post covid you know comes into a, a space where it can become you know um the relevant part of you know the relevancy right the, whatever it is you've gone through in the past that you can find you know some currency there you talk about surviving succeeding thriving becoming significant all of this the um the, uh, the catalyst many have thought that somebody else is going to do it for them what i want you to take this thinking into is it was always the responsibility of each of us, right? Always the responsibility of each of us to have a vision, to, to move from a level to the other. But like, okay, Christians, we abandon it to the pastor. So pastor is going to leave it for us or that person is going to do it for us. And then we come into this, <laughs> this, this, this crazy shaking, this thing called COVID and we're locked down, right? And I believe that that time, like Noah, was like being in the ark. It was really a time, like you said, you know, God doesn't tend, but he was aware that it would happen. Yeah, it was a major 
disruption impact in Noah's time. Uh, and they all went into the ark, Noah, his family, and what he would use, you know, when he came out, there was strategy for survival, for succeeding, for thriving, for becoming significant. So the animals were paired male and female because they've got to procreate. Um, can you, the expert that you are and the, uh, <laughs> the volatile, volatile thinker that you are, can you talk to us, right, about, you know, in talking to us about vision, you said people need to revisit their uh, reason for existence. That's, that is deep. As simple as it sounds, that is deep because a lot of people even here have not given it a thought. You see what I mean? Why do I exist? Because we have a lot of people talking at us right talking at us and we don't give time for distilling we don't give time to thinking right um take us there catalyst um uh, make us understand that when we come out of this conversation we have to know that there is still a responsibility right to figure out the reason for your existence right and that you are valuable you're a personal value it is very important that we do that this is august of 2022 we've got a few more months for the year to end we have a decade to you know um achieve what you're saying you know <laughs> we need what we need to figure out what we what we need to do to survive you know even move from survival to thriving succeed becoming significant otherwise why do you exist so i really want someone that is on this uh, con in this conversation with us you know on this uh, platform with us to ask themselves that question vision is a mental picture of where you're going where you're coming from where you're going and uh, where you are and where you're going so how do we strengthen our minds to be able to string the thoughts from where we're coming to where we are and to where we're going vision is a mental picture of where of who you are where you are and you have asked us a question people um have to we need to revisit you know the reason for our existence um catalyst that is really important it for me it, it's really, i i know you have a lot more to say but i wanted you to really break it down because it's like a rhetorical question but a lot of people need to come into that bringing you out of trauma why do you exist you never thought about it and suddenly this evening you have to think why do i exist <laughs> who am i yeah. i mean i um i agree with you you know that uh, your vision is a mental picture um also inclusive with that mental picture is it's a spiritual picture <laughs> yeah. yeah it is also an it is also an emotional picture that should yeah. translate into a physical picture. Yeah, so we're talking about absolutely. harmony between we're talking about harmony between spirit, mind, and body, and even social construct. So 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 it's it's an alignment of the entirety of your being because you are spirit, soul, body, and, and you're situated in yeah. an environment. What is the purpose of a vision if it is not to execute it? Exactly. And where do you you are executing it in, 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 in a place, in a space where you are called to execute it. Not for Absolutely. you. Your vision is not for you. Your vision is for somebody. Or your vision is for people. Yeah. So, so you've got to be able to harmonize all of that. But, but, but for you to be able to harmonize all of that, right, you've got to ask yourself some very, very critical fundamental questions. How do I catch my vision and when we are talking about vision it's very very important for us to recognize that we're talking about purpose your mandate your calling right so so every man's vision is an expression of the reason why he had to be created <laughs> you have to be created that's why you're alive you have to be alive that's why god god gives you breath every day the reason why God gives you breath every day simply because your purpose is still relevant. Now, yeah. you have responsibility to that breath. You know, during COVID, I realized how expensive oxygen was. Oxygen cost about 150,000 naira a day. You know, I am 55 years old. 
right? If I spent 150,000 Naira a day for 55 years, I will be, I will be, I will be, I will be owing God 7.5 billion Naira. So, so that's how valuable your life is. That's how valuable your purpose is. Just by mere, you know, taking in oxygen. So the fact that oxygen seems like it's free, it's not free. God is paying it forward simply because your purpose is very relevant. And to date, calculate how much your life and your purpose is valued at just by valuing it by, by you know, by the calculation of oxygen. Now, if you understand that value, you will realize that you are not alive just to wake up, eat, and drink. You are not mm -hmm. alive just to dress up. You are not alive to drive a nice car. You are alive for something of significance. That's why I talked about significance, not even success, because it yeah. is a journey from a mindset of survival to a mindset of thriving to a mindset of success, to a mindset of significance. Now, yeah. the person that has discovered his purpose is the person that becomes significant. When you discover and you fulfill your mandate, you become significant. The Bible says that, and God at, at your death will welcome you and say to you, welcome my good and faithful son. Enter into the joy of the Lord your God. The definition of significance, the definition of success is not for you to achieve whatever it is that you feel to achieve. No, if I say to a man, I want you to go to London and I want you to deliver a parcel in the next 24 hours, right, to this person because it is so important that this person receives it by latest 9 p.m. tomorrow. Now, the only way that I would judge that that person is successful if, if, if that person delivers based on the mandate that I gave that person. So the definition of success is not about how much money you make. It's not about you marrying. It's not about you having children. It's not about you having a good job. It's about you fulfilling the message for which you are sent. And that's, that should be what is driving you. And so when Absolutely. we talk about this purpose, there are five ways that you can discover your vision or your purpose. Number one is you look back. You look back and you, you join the dots backwards. What is it in your past that you have achieved and done? What is it that people have always sought your face to help them with? What are the problems in the past that you've always loved to solve and you always solved easiest? Number one question you should ask yourself and note the answer down. The second thing you want to ask yourself is you look within. So you look, you've looked back. Now look within and ask yourself, what am I wired to achieve effortlessly? What gifts and talents do I have? What am I passionate about? What is it that annoys me? What is it that attracts me? What is it that pulls me? What is it that I love to do? What is it that I can do effortlessly? When they wake me up at 2 a.m. and they ask me to do it, right? I can do it effortlessly. What is it that I can do for free? What is it that if they paid me a million dollars to stop doing, I can't stop doing? Look within yourself and find out one thing and write it down. The third place you want to look is you want to look around you. You want to look around you for the problems that, that pull you for the problems that your heart connects to, for the problems that you love to solve, for the solution that you love to be, right? For the things that are easiest for you to solve, the things that people gravitate towards you and ask you for favor to do for them. Write it down. The fourth place you want to look, you, you want to look up. You want to look up to God, your creator, because he's the one that created you. The Bible says, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. And I called you, I mandated you, I purposed you to achieve this. So the person that you should be asking is not your pastor. The person that you should be asking is your creator. And so it is about going and looking up, right? And asking your creator, who am I? Who am I not? What am I? What am I not? What problem am I created to solve? What solution am I born to be? Now, 
you need to look at all of those four answers and you need to look at what i call the sweet spot what is the harmony between the answers of all of those four things and therein begins your journey number one number two is the story of joseph right the story of daniel Shadrach, and abednego was not a story where i read that they actually sat down to have these conversations or to and just to ask these questions so their purpose found them their vision found them <laughs> so that is another thing right but you must have a spirit of excellence you must love god you must genuinely have a personal relationship with God and you must trust God absolutely, right? So that anything you find your hands to do it, anywhere you find yourself, with an excellent spirit, like the spirit upon Joseph, like the spirit upon Daniel, you execute such that anytime they are looking for any problem solver, anytime there's any problem, they will seek you out. Now, when you follow that path, right, your vision will find you or your purpose will find you. Right, let Just me interject there. Are you, okay, carry on. Okay, you, you have the fifth one to do. Go on and let me know when I can interject because I, I want to... Yeah. You know, you, you've Just given us some great stuff. Just like you found Joseph, just like you found Daniel Shavedrak and Abednego. So, it is about you showing up for yourself oh, it is about it. you ability it is about you fulfilling the mandate for which god has created you okay you just said what i wanted to i was interjecting to see that you know this is really great the picture that we're painting right so it's really a picture of life if you're on this broadcast this is a day that you know uh, should really begin a new walk for many of us so we, we, you talked about vision, really. And uh, what is the vision is a, a mental picture of where you're going. That's exactly, you've explained it, you know, in its totality. Um, um, Hebraic thinking, right, is really being full with, you know, the picture, like you painted pictures in words, being, you know, full with the picture of your purpose, the picture of who you are. The picture of where you're going, the picture of where you're coming from, because Hebrew is a, a language of pictures with um, numerical value. I mean, you, you you you've given us five ways to you know really purpose. Purpose is like, yeah, like you said, is the reason you exist, and we are in between COVID, post COVID. We are the sons of God. There is a lot that is written about us that has been said about us. We were we were before we were created it's not going to change so it's a lot for the mind you know to comprehend really it is that simple but i find um Landry, that simple thoughts can be quite deep uh, you know you and i are described as really deep people you know now where i came in what i, what I wanted to say you already said it right that we've got to be visible you are literally what we're saying in this section of the conversation is unless you manifest that is you know visibility and we're not talking about just show up like that we're saying show up as a person of excellence as a person of uh, with confidence as a person that understands their purpose and, you know show up in your unique self all right and we're saying you know well, this is my passion that people recognize that they are unique you're not like any other person and we are in uh, an era where there are the, it's, it's it, it, we're just in an, a, an information age right and technology you know the digital space uh you, you know knowledge is uh, is being transported at, at, at the speed of light so there is so much coming at us but in all of that you know everybody has to be connected with purpose if there was ever any time to to know who you are and to understand that you have a purpose that is the reason for your existing so you are the biggest deal you know for me until midnight 2029 so yeah i was coming in to say like you know you have to manifest you have to show up and showing up is not showing up 
in ignorance, <laughs> you know what I mean? But showing up, because sometimes as Christians, honestly, uh, Larry, we, people show up to prayer meetings and there's nothing in, the, in your mind that you're really asking, you think you are, but you're on a road, right? You're on a road, you're on overdrive, you know, and you're just on fourth gear, you're cruising. But we're saying you can't afford to live that kind of life. You have to live strategically. You have to be intentional. You have to be ready to put in that work. You have to be ready to believe in who you are. You have to be ready to believe in value that you carry. You have to be ready not to spiritualize common sense, okay? You have to go, you know, like you said, you know, look up to your maker and you know discover your design that you were perfectly making just continue to speak into that um, uh, um let, let's just continue to converse because i believe that today there are a lot of people that are going to be ransomed out of where they are because we're made to feel guilty even um larry sometimes when we're trying to move in purpose you know so we, there's a lot of confusion like i said there's a lot of chaos there's a lot of disruption and um I, I think the Lord, the, 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 the world seems to be flattened out. We're sons of God. You know, the Bible tells us that the earnest expectation, and it's not just an expectation, there's an earnestness to it, you know, is expecting, you know, the sons of God, the revealing of the sons of God. And one translation says they're standing on tiptoes. So they're standing on tiptoes waiting for problem solvers. I mean, it, 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 it is so, it's so profound what you're saying. And, and I'd like to lean in on that, right? And, and I really want to quote this version of that scripture because, you know, it says that the whole world groans. The whole world is in pain, in agony, in suffering. Isn't that what the world is suffering today? I mean, this yeah. is the time of the manifestation of that scripture. It says the whole yeah. world groans in pain, on tiptoes, on tiptoes eagerly yeah. await the whole world is eagerly awaiting the solution to the world's agony mm -hmm. and what is the solution to the world's agony when the sons of god manifest so 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 and i'm and i'm intentionally using these words the world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god that word is not a new age word the manifestation no. or manifesting is not an, a no. new age word. No. It is a scripture that, that depicts and describes who is required and what is required in this day and age. So when we talk about manifestation, right, there are dimensions to manifestation. Now, for you to manifest, you have to recognize that everything exists in two dimensions for you to manifest anything physical for anything physical to be so you know this bottle right first of all before it manifested or it it came to be in the physical it existed in the invisible whether as a, a thought or whether as an idea or whether a dream now, the iPhone first existed in the mind of Steve Jobs. Microsoft first existed in the imagination of Bill Gates. So everything that manifests, whether it's a product, whether it's a thing, whether it's a service, how be it good, bad, ugly, first of all existed in the invisible dimension. Yeah. Whether it's in the spiritual dimension, in the thought dimension, in an idea dimension, in a dream dimension, before yeah. it was manifested in the physical. So check this out. So in God's mind, right, the sons of God already existed. And it is our responsibility, right, to take on and to tap into the mind of God. Oh, my God. Now, 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 when the children of Israel left Egypt, right, they were supposed to manifest as the people that would take on, right, the inheritance in the promised land. They couldn't manifest because of their mindset. They couldn't <laughs> manifest because of their vision. So, so we're talking <laughs> about vision. So when the, the 10 spies were sent to go and spy, right, eight of them, eight of them had the wrong vision 
They said that we see ourselves like, like, like grasshoppers. Oh my God. So they couldn't manifest as sons of God. But Caleb and Joshua, they tapped into the mind of God. And they said what God had declared concerning them. We are able to take on the city. So for Caleb and Joshua to be able to utter those words, they tapped into a realm that was the invisible realm, and they tapped into God's vision for their lives for that season. So when we're talking about manifesting, right, when we're talking about vision, we're not talking about you looking around you and seeing physical things. We're talking about, first of all, being able in the spirit to tap into the mind of God and the heart of God for the now. Now, it is that that when you tap into that you can download. Oh, it's just like the internet, right? There's no way that you can do anything today. We're not going to be able to have had this conversation if we didn't have data, if we didn't have internet, if we didn't tap into the source of this device, that thing that makes this device work. And so for each and every one of us, as the sons of God, to manifest, we must tap to source and download the vision for each one of us. Now, okay. until then, it will be impossible for us to manifest. Okay. Absolutely impossible. Why? Because as you see, you become. That which you behold, you become. <laughs> you cannot yeah. become outside of what you so if you look around you alone you will behold and become what you see which was what happened to the eight spies however Caleb and Joshua they didn't look around they tapped into the essence of the dimension of the spirit and they tapped into the essence of the mind of God in the spirit and they downloaded and they led the children of God. They led the new sons of God into God's inheritance. Only two of them made it. Only two of them made it. The rest died in the wilderness. So we're going through such a chaotic time. The only way out, right? The only way out is when the sons of God manifest. And how will the sons of God manifest without tapping into the mind of God? Where he saved and kept your mandate, where he has kept your power, where he has kept your vision, where he has kept your, your calling and every resource that you require. And so that is why it is not something you do just in the physical. It is not just a mental thing. It is mental, it is physical, it is emotional, yet it is very spiritual. And when we're talking about sons of God, really, we're talking about those that truly, truly have a personal and intimate relationship with God. Those that see God as their father, not as their master. Because the Bible says that, except you are like these little children, you cannot manifest everything that the kingdom expects you to manifest. So God wants to be your father and he wants to be, have a father child relationship with you he wants you to have a child father relationship with him intimate and so look at your relation if you're a parent look at your relationship with your children and learn how god wants you to be with him what how children relate with parents children don't fast and pray children don't sow seeds children don't do all of those things for you to clothe them for you to pay their school fees for you to give them accommodation why because they know that they have a covenant with you the parents and it is your responsibility to do certain things as it is their responsibility to do certain things so it is not about them paying you paying you the parent it is not about them sowing into you the parent it is not about them you know doing all of those things that that are religious rather than relational it is yeah. about you developing that intimacy, that personal work with so, um, uh, so, Catalyst, you've gone into mindset. Now, I'm going to take us back a little bit because you've gone into mindset. I think that 
you know, how people practice their relationship with God is really dependent on their mindset. So I want to take us back again. You know, I love, you know, you know how you and I would like to kind of go deep and distill things. You just said some really amazing um, amazing things. And I want us to now move into, you've said, there's a lot of rich thoughts that have come out here and they're practical that people can use. I, I love, you know, because Jesus is very practical. He, Jesus was very in tune with what was happening in society. And it's very important as we converse, if you're here with us, you're here as a family. This is a decade of God's family. So, you know, that's why we have conversations where our heads are not just about on, um, down on our devices. We have to have these conversations where we talk about real issues and we're not even afraid to be wrong and be adjusted, but at least we talk. And um, uh, I don't know if you know, um, for those of you that are here, uh, maybe you don't know, but this is, this, um, uh, is a decade of the mouth, right? Uh, in God's calendar. So we are expected to speak. So, you know, in all of the, the disruptions and all the chaos and all that is happening, uh, we're expected to speak because as a man is, that's how he thinks, you know, but a man is what he sees also. So uh, he, there's been a, um, a, a lot of talk about vision and I want us, you know, uh, who have been here to understand that, you know, it's important that that particular thought is is is, is uh, established in your mind that you have to be a person you know if you've not considered it you come out of this conversation you have to begin to think about issues of purpose and you have to look at that definition that purpose is the reason you exist so if you're not even daily visiting that thought then you're going to be a person that just lives a kind of come see come saw life you know what i mean you're just drifting and and drifting really is you know when people talk about marine spirits in africa marine spirit marine spirit what really it means is living a life that you're drifting it's like you're really not settled you're not established so get that picture because otherwise the picture we get is some some mermaid with tails and all this stuff going on but that's not really it it's a way of talking about a life that is drifting so if you don't want to drift okay please conceptualize that thought that vision is from god you know vision is who you are the purpose is purpose is why you exist and we can no longer okay so we talk about chaos crisis disruptions what the catalyst and i are trying to do this um, today is to you know get you to understand that the reason you exist has to become something that, you know, your passion should be derived from that thought. So we're talking about your headspace here. You know, it's about, you know, how we have to come into wholesome thinking, right? And, you know, you know that we can capture thoughts, look at it, get a mental picture of what God is saying to us so we don't lose it so vision you have i want us to understand that that you know he's been talking to us about the the reason you exist so tomorrow when you wake up you're going to think why do i exist otherwise there's going to be many whatsapp messages many phone calls uh, people defining you people telling you what you should be doing you know people you know everybody wants to um be able to define you to tell you what you should be doing but we're saying go to the creator in confusion and you can pull yes uh, that only went on the thinking went on to or the conversation went on to actually beginning to you know um execute your vision so the manifestation aspect isn't it um um uh uh catalyst where we're, we're like conversing right so when it's not turn by turn you can interrupt you can interrupt me anytime you know how you and i talk so you know i'm trying to move this from from one thought to the other you know and that's how com computers are designed because in a time of crisis confusion and um all of this going on we now have to train our minds to move thoughts like that you know so that you know we become people that are living our very best lives okay we still become those you know problem solvers because another thing i learned is that uh, i just i'm drumming this i'm i'm saying this day and night to uh christians and to anybody else but primarily christians because they are the sons of god that have to manifest in a distinctive and that's what we really are talking about they're not expecting you to manifest you know as a preacher they're expecting you to manifest as a problem solver solutions bearer 
And what that really means is that you can innovate or you can create a business or, you know, a concept that is just mind blowing that you become the best you in that trade. That's what they're expecting. They're not expecting you to manifest or add to the problems of the world. Right. No, we're not. They're not expecting that, you know, so, you know, I like what you were uh, talking about. Everything exists. In fact, you just, I just thought, my God, you know, I was thinking it and you said it. So lots of stuff I'm thinking you're saying it. So I suppose that's why, you know, you know, we're, we're who we are. Now, um, catalyst, yeah, everything. I, I think about the, uh, the woman with the issue of blood a lot. And then the fact that she bled for 12 years, which is really 12 is a number for government, you know, saying, well, there has to be a shift. She's been on transition 12 years. It's, it's a code, really. Uh, it's, it's, it's really a code to us to, to, to unpack, it, especially in this time, you know. So you know, I believe that everything exists in the realm of thought. You know, that's what God told me. So this woman says, if only I can touch the helm of his garment. If only I can touch. And then the Bible says, immediately, the flow of blood stopped. She had not even touched because in the Old Testament, the high priest's garment had pomegranate sewn at the bottom, and that's for healing. Now, Lara, look at this again. So now God in creation, in Genesis 1, 26, said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And then, you know, verse 27 said, male and female, he made them. But it was not, to ch it was not until chapter 2 that the reality came. So this tells me that, and, and remember, the earth was without form or shape. There was major crisis, major chaos. It, you know, the, you know, and he said, let there be light. So illumination, and, and then God begins to create. But think about it, because I'm, I'm pulling on what you said, but everything exists in a, in a, a thought realm, a dream realm, or whatever. So we are trying to say to ourselves, and you're saying to us, you've got to get, you know, yourself um, understanding that you exist for a purpose and then you've got to come back to who you are to be a person that can move in dimensions and realms of, of power and authority so that you can show up, like we're saying. So I wanted to um, um, really add to that thinking and to emphasize it. And if you have more to say, because we want people to leave this place with, uh, like, uh, you know, with god's mind okay so the god mind is the hebraic mind the mind that has a picture of the words that they have heard and then it settles and it becomes what they live by so if we never had anything tonight we heard that we're people of vision or we've got to be a people of vision we can't show a blank like well, nothing because we have created problem solvers if we're sons of god and solutions bearers and the earth is groaning covid is an example of groaning they are waiting for those that can discover you know the you know anything that stops us having you know uh vaccinations after vaccinations after vaccinations you know what i mean in every crisis it creates opportunities so we have to recognize opportunity created by the present um uh, crisis. You also talked about, you know, a manifestation, and I have in my notes here from what you were thinking. So let me know if I caught it right. Remember, you can inter inter interject at any time. It's a conversation. Right. You said, um, I, 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 what you said about manifest, and I put in my notes. Agreement with God is a foundation for purpose discovery. So we've got to agree with Him. You know, um, from the way you describe manifestation, right? And um, I also have a minus applicability because it's very important if, if we can apply knowledge to a context it's not going to be knowledge that we can it's not possible you can execute it it's got to be located in time and space it's got to be located what you're telling us what we're discussing here you know there's got to be people who leave this conversation understanding i'm in spain right I'm in Lagos, Nigeria. I'm in London, UK. I'm in Dallas, you know, uh, Texas. I'm in Los Angeles. You know, what I'm hearing here, how do I manifest there? I have a dream. How do I? They've got to be confident enough to go out and understand that you can, that dream can be pulled down 
to the earth realm all right you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places but you have to what we're discussing here strategies okay first of all we're talking about you know like uh personal assertiveness we're talking about being you know who you know they, well for me the picture i'm getting is going to be the god nature and character on the earth so vision all right you have, you have so, to so, show up go interject and, and take it from there it's also very important right and what we're talking about is we're separating and um, 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 differentiating a vision from an ambition. Uh, yeah. What are you even now, talking now, about ambition? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. ambition, ambition is when you pursue what you want to pursue. Right. So, so don't yeah. don't mistake for a vision. That's, that's not what we're talking about, right? We're not talking about that. that. We haven't even mentioned that's that. About what you guys, mean. are you listening? Guys, are you listening? We're not talking about ambition. You know. <laughs> So that's why we're not talking about what you want for yourself. So what uh -huh. you want for yourself is the pursuit of success, which is an ambition. Now, now you may, at the end of 80 years, get to a point where you have wasted your time pursuing an ambition that is not God's vision. Don't get caught in that. And that's why we're saying that, you know, we'll go back and listen to this, this, this recording. And, and I'm sure... You know, Apostle is going to post it on our Instagram. We have defined what vision is, and we have broken down the whole context of vision and how to get your vision, right? Now, I want to speak about, and I thought it was important for me to, to speak, say that. Now, you talked about the age that we're in. It's the age of the affirmation. It's the, in, it's the age of the word, right? Of your declaration. It's the age of the things that day right now this is very very important this is look this is very very important we're talking about you know one of the most powerful things that brings about manifestation haga that is you are able to mutter and by your utterances you are able to create so 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 god the almighty god manifested by vision first and then by affirmation declaration so he saw it in his mind he pictured it he imagined it he desired it he believed it and then he spoke it into manifestation now there's a whole process right that goes between vision and speaking a lot of people speak right and they speak empty words that's not what we are talking about here right because if you do not begin with visualization that is tapping into the mind of god right and imagining what that is like and imagining how you can manifest that and thinking through how you can transport it manifest it from the dimension of ideas the dimensions of inspiration the dimensions of ideas think through how you can do it right and put in place a plan right that that you will manifest it's not going to happen so you can like dream all you like to dream and visualize all you like to visualize because we're talking about manifestation and the process and the protocol so this is how it works the bible says the bible says and god is only able to do far exceedingly abundantly above one that which we say that which we think that which we imagine according to the power that worketh within us <laughs> which means that you know what god is waiting on us to outdo us and that's who god is that's what god is he wants to do the extra however there's your responsibility and what is your responsibility wait what are you saying if what you are saying does not align with what you see, what you visualize, if that does not align with what you imagine, if that does not align with what you think, if that does not align with what you believe, if that does not align with how you feel, if that does not align with your passion, right? And your actions, you can't manifest it. So... The Catholics, can you throw in this um, for the people? Because otherwise, some people can just be in that realm of 
imagination and they can just be lost out there in the spirit realm so here's what the bible says romans 8 14 you know you know it's catholic's been talking about sons of god manifestation as many as are led by his spirit these are the sons of god so you know recognizing the inspiration recognizing the voice of the spirit as many as are led you know I, 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 and i want you also to progress the thinking to um what paul said to the corinth because you know corinthians because you know they had a greek mindset it was all about you know idea 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 without the spirit so I'm going to give you something uh, uh, um, the, uh, Larry to just get us excited about. And I think that that's where we are right now. And I don't know. People have to get excited on the score. I think this is just really such a significant conversation. You know, I, oh, everything about the Bible is in, don't look at it like one holy book and look at it as a, it really, like we said, be relational. It is the greatest book on sociology used to solve societies. From greatest book on philosophy, greatest book on personal development, greatest book on, you know what I mean, leadership development, greatest book on family building. I, I don't know what else. You know what I'm saying? If, you, if you're feeling like your brain is shutting down, go to Ecclesiastes and Proverbs and you're going to go into deep thought. Now, here's what Paul said to these guys that thought they knew it all. You know, and, and he said, look, you know, God was, you know, bringing up the God dimension, that realm that we're talking about, you know, says, you know, Years have not heard. That's where we are right now. In this time, we're showing up as people that have to go beyond, right? And we have to begin to, you know, curate things, you see. We have to begin to innovate things that are not just normal, baseline. You see, we have to move into that dimension of eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, no has, you know, man comprehended. It hasn't come into the comprehension of man what God is able to do for those who love him, do you or not. Now, here's what we're saying, right? As many as are led by his spirit, these are the sons of God. So we're not talking about just go up there and imagine and imagine. You know, there's some Christians who just float. They're just floating. They're not even on this ground. They're waiting for God to come. I want to make heaven. I want to make heaven. But heaven wants to make them. You see what I mean? God wants to showcase heaven on earth, but they just want to catch the first flight to heaven. You understand? So they're living this religious life. I want to make heaven. Apostle, it's quite interesting, right? That why are we trying to make where we already are? <laughs> I mean, let me... I'm not getting right. into it's... trouble with you, though. Yes, it says that... <laughs> it says Says, it says that we are seated with Christ at the right hand of God yes. in the heavenly place. Yes. Yeah, what you give your, your life, you are seated with Christ at the right yes. hand of God in Christ yes. in the heavenly place. Heavenly Why are you place. trying to get to where you already are? Now, now the responsibility is not trying to get to where you already are. The responsibility is to sit there and download and come here and execute. Execute. So come on. Supposed to live and visit here, not live here, and visit there when you're in trouble, when you have a need. You are seated. You are sat right there with him. You are not tumba. You are sat right next to God. So you are supposed to be downloading. Like Jesus came to teach us. Every day, Jesus will go and meditate and download and come and execute. You, you are looking around and you are for how you can get there where you catch already the first are flight, to catch the first flight there <laughs> yeah, you're trying to catch a first flight to where you already <laughs> exist and that's why we understand that we're the only creations that exist in parallel universes if you do not understand this concept you haven't even started that's why you are the son of god that's why you are a son of god you are seated with him in him and you are one with him. Oh my God. So, so people are trying to pray and scream and, 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 and project their voices to heaven when God is inside you. Why are you screaming? Why are you shouting? God is inside you. It's not that far. You are heaven. You carry heaven. And you know what the catalyst? He even says in Isaiah that the Isaiah says his ears are not too deaf that he cannot hear. Neither his arms too short that he can't help. Oh I mean, and, and that's why that's why one of the most powerful 
vehicles or mediums to download, to connect with God is meditation. Oh, come on. It's you got me now. Yeah. You got me now, bro. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you, meditation. Meditation. Without meditation. Meditation is one of the most powerful prayer techniques. Meditation is one of the most powerful visualization techniques. Meditation is one of the most powerful belief techniques. Meditation is one of the most powerful thought techniques. Meditation is one of the most powerful energy techniques. Without meditation, forget it. Let's break it down, uh, Catalyst, you know, so that people know we don't want you to get lost out there in the, in the realms of meditating. Uh, what, what we're saying is you take a thought, you take a scripture, you know, uh, and I, I have these five steps, um, Catalyst, that when you get the revelation, right, download, you've got to take it to a meditation. Honestly, unless you meditate, you can't incarnate that word. So from meditation, you become it. And if you don't become it, you can't manifest it. If you don't manifest it, you can't demonstrate it, which is execution. So this is really, um, I think as you said at the beginning, um, uh, Catalyst, that this is a, a very significant day. I really believe in what you said. You know, when we came on, it's very significant for all of us, even myself here. Like I was saying to you the other day, uh, we really, you know how we have prayer partners? We need thinking partners. And we're talking about thinking, taking the word of God, distilling it, really processing it. We're talking about meditation, really. That, you know, the best friends we should have now are people who are ready to go to that realm of eyes have not seen calamite eyes have not seen ears have not heard nor has the heart of man comprehended because you mentioned some greats you mentioned you know some of these people you know i mean we're sitting here we're, we're enjoying instagram right but we can progress this revelation. Someone here can, can get an idea. You know what I'm saying? We can't be dull of mind. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned for our sons of God that we can understand the realms like you were saying here. And I didn't know you were as passionate as I am that people understand their location. The way I put it this way is if you don't know your location, you can't get your location. And we're talking about spiritual things. If you don't know that you're yeah. seated in him, in heavenly places, you've been blessed with this, every spiritual uh, uh, blessing in heavenly places, everything that you're supposed to manifest his wisdom in heavenly places. So we're going to have to get used to the digital age, the digital economy, how to be relevant in the digital space, how to uh, uh, bring the protocols of heaven to the digital place, how to, how to suppress what exists with superior um uh objectives superior projects superior, superior businesses you know superior because we're sons of god yeah i mean it's it's really really interesting you know um you know i want to talk a bit about meditation if i may you know and i want to i want to share seven critical things right number one right you cannot tap into the essence of god if you cannot be silent a lot of people are they are too chatty. They are too talkative. So, so you cannot hear talking. A lot of people go into a place of prayer, talking, talking, yakking, yakking, yakking. Okay, so, so why are you there? You are supposed to be there to download. It's not about you yakking, yakking, yakking and nagging. It's about you going to download. And for you to be able to really, really listen, you need to be quiet. You need to be silent. So that's the first, first discipline you learn from meditation silence now you have to activate solitary silence you have to create an environment where your spirit your soul and your body is still silence now now david was very silent solomon was very silent right they meditated in silence if you if you if you if you look into scriptures you will find out that david that wrote the book of Psalms could not have downloaded all of those things by talking. Solomon that wrote, you know, Proverbs and Ecclesiastics and Sons of Solomon could not have downloaded that, that, those depths of deep things, without, deep things. Without, being, without being silent. The second thing is that, you know, for you, to, we're talking about creative imagination, right? For you, the Bible says there's a spirit in man. 
and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So for you to download inspiration, for you to have understanding about what you have downloaded, you need to be in a place in a meditative state. For you to release your creative energies and your creative imagination, you need to be in a place of meditation. So, you know, one of the greatest gifts that God gave man is man's imagination. Look at Genesis 11. The Bible says that anything that man imagines to do cannot be stopped. God made a statement. God knows what he invested in each and every one of us. The third thing that I want to share about meditation, right, is the Bible says that when two or three agree as concerning anything, it is done. Now, a lot of people think that that agreement is when you and, you and I, apostle, agree. No, a lot of people are double-minded in themselves. That is, their vision does not align and is not in agreement with their thoughts. Their thoughts are not in agreement with, with their desires. Their desires are not in a, agreement with how they feel. How they feel is not in agreement with what they believe. What they believe is not in agreement with what they say. What they say is not in agreement with what they are doing. So you have broken that code of agreement and alignment. It is in a place of meditation that you can align your thoughts with your beliefs, with your feelings, with your words, and then download a set of actions. It's in a place of meditation that you agree, that right? And you bring alignment to all of those elements. Now, Imagine if you had a prayer partner who also knew how to meditate and both of you are in a, in, a, in a place of internal alignment and both of you are meditating on the same thing at the same time. That is the power of when two will come together and chase 10,000. It is not when we are just yakking it. How many agreements have you done yakking, yakking, yakking? It is when your vision... The, you know, that Genesis 11 says, and the people is one. The people is one. Meant that in all things, they were aligned. Whether their thoughts, what they desired, what they saw, what they were doing, they were like one, not different people trying to agree. The people that plural, is plural one. became singular. Plural became, became singular because of the strength of the agreement. It's in a place of meditation that you do that. Right. Okay, We're let's talking put a about... picture here. Let's paint a picture here. Uh, people, let's mm -hmm. paint a picture here. Uh, the catalyst and I are going to paint a picture here. So what we're saying here, again, I, I call it the Hebraic mindset is the God mind. Because, you know, uh, you know God's <laughs> background. So the Hebraic mindset, the mind of Jesus, the mind of God is the mind that carries picture of the words. So what we're saying here is, you know, for instance, we're talking about becoming, son, you know, coming into your identity as sons of God, which is herein lies your vision. So identity is tied to vision fulfillment, right? So we're saying who are the sons of God and the definition is as many as are led by the spirit of God. So for instance, we're capitalist of, we're talking about this and it's Romans 8, 14, and you have that. So you begin to consider. And I had in my notes as you were talking, you know how God says, be still and know that I am God. Be still. You know, so the stillness of that is within oh, creates a depth. You know, because it, it, it takes a lot to carry a thought, people. If you're listening here, it takes a lot to incarnate a thought, a, a belief. It takes a lot. You think about it, consider it. So and what we're saying here is when we don't want you to be lost in realms, okay? People go crazy that way. They have breakdowns and all that. We're saying in your sonship, you're guided by the spirit of God to a place of stillness. Like, you know, uh, 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 the Catholic said earlier on that Jesus used to go to the other side and all that. And that we're not to be so verbose when we come to pray because God already knows we're living predetermined lives anyway. The destiny means predetermined course of events. In fact, if we were to be uh, uh, rude and if we were to be kind, I will say we're cheats, are we? Christians, we're cheats because we're living a life that's already been designed. We're living a life that's already been spoken for. So we want you to get a mental picture that remember we're saying, you know, don't want to take the first flight to heaven. Don't want to quickly get off the earth without making a mark 
right? So, you know, you just, you just kind of pass by. You have to be, you know, purpose driven and be conscious of making a mark, you know, that you were created for something that nobody else can ever do. So that's a picture we want you to get. And then we're saying for you to be able to do that, you have to discover the power of meditation. And the catalyst gave you like four, four levels, four, four things to consider. But we're saying consider those in the context of your identity as a son of God, a person on assignment. You know, so I'm just kind of, you know, we're just having this conversation with ourselves, all of us as family members, right? So that we uh, end up here with people that are going to even get results by tomorrow because they have been strengthened in their minds. To, they, they can look in and they come out of that grasshopper thinking that you were saying, come out of orphan spirit, come out of entitlement spirit, come out, you know what I mean? So you're not like the cripple waiting 38 years for someone to come and put you in, you know, into a pool where everybody else is jumping. You're just going to take a risk and try. So I wanted to paint that picture. And even God, when he's talking about restoration, uh, you know, Isaiah 40, he said, consider not the former things. So don't give your meditation time to things that are irrelevant. Consider not the former things, you know? So that that's profound. So, um, uh, yeah, the catalyst, you, you, you've you been right. very generous with your time. I don't know if you are okay to round off your thoughts, bring it to a place. You know, I wish we could have had time for question and answer because, you know, th this has been, I think it's so needed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't know what you're thinking. I think both of us just carry this heart of compassion for for for, for people. Um, and, but we also need to teach people that time is money. Uh, I'm very, one day we're going to have a conversation about wealth and wealth mandate that I'm very passionate about because God told me that it is illegal to be broke right now. It is illegal for a son of God to be broke because, um, you know, wealth is now a mandate. So there's an official instruction from heaven that we, we, we be wealthy. So it is illegal. I put it that way. It's illegal to be broke. So one day we're going to have that conversation and see how we can get people to get a mental picture that it's not okay to be broke. It's not, it's, it, it, you know, people have to finance things. Like we, we have to finance you know, the times that people come. We have conversations. We need to say, well, this is, because what you have, um, the conversation has really, you know, uh, it's been profound. It's very rich. It's very, uh, you, you'd be paying thousands of dollars to have this kind of thing. But, you know, we have, want people to be pulled into where what they have to be pulled into for now you know because the world i believe that the earnest expectation truly of all of creation is waiting for the sons of god to manifest thank you very much you know and just in in rounding it up right um i think the conversation has been based on this scripture right the earnest expectation of the whole of creation has been waiting so let me bring it home has been waiting for you everyone here right the problems of the world you are the solution the pain of the world you are the solution the needs of the world you are the solution the wants of the world you are the solution but the world on tiptoes at the edge of their seats they've been waiting for you right god has been waiting for you but you have been waiting for the world you have been waiting for profound the world, right so it's time for you to take the responsibility right to begin to journey with to solve problems now money and i want to tie this to money yeah money is not what we think it is money is an exchange of value money money changes when value and when value is appreciated so so when you give value value appreciates value and value is valued that's what money is Money is about solving problems. Kodangote is the richest black man in the world because of the problems he's solving. He's solving millions of problems every day and he's taking $1, $10, $50, $100 from millions of people. When you find your solution, when you find the problem you are created to solve, you will create value. And as you create value, your value will be valued and reciprocated with value. Now, the way that people measure value is cash. Don't follow money. Never chase money. Look for problems. Look for problems that nobody else is solving. 
Bill Gates became the richest man in the world because he, he solved our communication problems. The software that allows you and I to send, to create letters for businesses, to do PowerPoint presentation, Bill Gates created it. Steve Jobs created the device that you and I are on now. Mark Zuckerberg created the social system that we call WhatsApp, Instagram. This Instagram that you and I are on is because of Mark Zuckerberg, right? So you go find the problems that you are here to solve. That's why God created you. And you can only download that solution with a personal and intimate relationship and tapping into the mind of God. Check this out. You can't tap into the mind of God without meditating. When Joshua went to meet God and, and asked God, how do I lead this, your people? How do I solve this problem? God says to him, meditate day and night. On the word. <laughs> On the instruction. Find, find the instruction. Download the instruction. Your own instruction. Download it from me. Meditate upon it. Get understanding. Come up with a plan. Execute it. Come up with a plan. And it says you will have good success, not success. God didn't say you will be successful. He says you would have good success. That is, you will become significant. And that's what we're saying today. Stop chasing money. Apostles say it is illegal for you to be broke. It is irresponsible for you to be broke. How can you be broke when people have pain, when people have needs, when people have wants, when people have desires? How can you ever be broke? You can't be broke. You just have not discovered the solution that you are. And when wow. you create that solution and you package it as value and you convert it into a product or a service, the world will value it. So there's also a design thinking process to create yeah. services and products. There's a design thinking protocol to create products and services. So it's not just about downloading it. There, there are processes and systems that already exist that you must plug into. For you to create that valuable brand that people are willing to pay incredible dollars for, it is your responsibility to transport that which is in God's mind, that invisible thing, to manifest it in the physical as a solution to humanity's problem. The more problems you solve, the more money comes to you. The bigger the problem you solve, the bigger the amount of money you attract. Let me, let, let me rest with that. I love that. Thank you. That's just such a great, um, uh, a great uh, closing thought. You talked about design thinking process. I want to take us, I want to close with this as well. Oh, can everyone just begin to thank um, my guest, thank my brother. Can you begin to thank uh, the Catalyst? It's been just great. Uh, we're expecting uh, to have him in America uh, soon. We're expecting, my tribe is expecting him um, out there. Um, Catalyst, I want to just end with this. You know, you talked about the design thinking process. I really want to get people that are on this call to that, you know, 1 Corinthians um, uh, round that I was talking about. Paul speaking to the saints in Corinth. You know, the Greek were, you know, philosophers, thinking people. So the Greek mindset, maybe you're someone, everything that's been said here tonight you're not going to move into the realm of meditation. That is God's realm. You're going to take it to academic realm and you're going to get lost. You know, you're going to take it to, and then you're going to be arguing with, you know, overanalyzing. You know, it takes a, a, a liberty of spirit to go to where we're taking you, the God realm, right? Where you can be, you know, the God on earth. Truly, if you were made in his image and his likeness, if he, he would have created you, really, if he had to come down. Think about it. You know, we have to begin to think ourselves as God. You're God here. <laughs> That's the truth of the matter. So here's what I want to, you know, okay, I think you want to say something. <laughs> what am I going to go from this place? I thought I was going to say You know what I'm saying? Afraid. You know, you are gods. You are gods. You are gods of this realm. Jesus said it. He says, 
And he called them gods unto whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken. It says, don't you know that ye are gods, but you live and die like you are gods of this realm. That's why this you were it. created to and dominion this here. And this is a mindset. You just have to just, you know, it's we're talking about pride, but it is that full being if I shall not means being full of God, being so full of God that you know you annoy those, you know, who want to be like you. So here's my challenge because you talked about design thinking process. So I wanted to share this out there because I'm thinking, can someone really come into this space that we're we're bringing you into? Really, you need to listen to this again and come into this place. I remember, you know, um, um, what's his name? Um, um, Virgin, tell me, tell, well, I cannot be forgetting Richard Branson's name. Richard Branson uh, comes from a, a privileged background, boarding school, all of that. But I, I think it was about age 17. He felt, look, this is not for me. I, I'm not saying don't go to school, by the way, please, because just, I'm just bringing about a just a picture you know so this guy he, he located destiny purpose right and he decided to pursue it and he came out of school and boldly moved like god and the rest is history he became a mold breaker and if you remember when we were in school in england trains everything was gray blue brown <laughs> we didn't have all these colors at least in in the united kingdom i don't know if I, about the rest of europe you see what i mean and when you're going to school that the the real conductors when the feet you know coats and mind the gap mind the gap and this guy came with the color red and with the color red yeah, he began to break mold. So, you know, there was Virgin uh, uh, train, they wore red uh, uniform, Virgin records, it was red. And so this young man who located purpose, you know, came out to become. So I'm saying that there's a lot of people here, young people as well. You know, this guy, you know, came out, you know, he located purpose, not even a son of God, not even a Christian. And he pursued that purpose, intentional, still pursuing a risk taker. So here's that realm of um, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered the heart of man. It is not a, a, a word that is typed in a, a verse of uh, scripture typed in the Bible. It's actually an instruction. It is a commission. It says at any given time, any risk taker who wants to come into that realm of innovation and creativity, like what's never been done, never been seen, never been heard, that we're saying when you get it, the money comes. You know, you're solving a problem. I like that. Please get the mental picture of that, that, you know, I need to find a problem to solve, okay? Because every crisis creates opportunity. I need to figure out how to become that. So, I, I, I uh, um, catalyst, I sat down and I heard that word design thinking. Didn't even know it was a concept that existed. I, I sat down, like you're saying, I got my download. I designed, you know, what uh, my my course and i'm teaching it and the guy who invited me said you know how, what are you saying i have a book you know from stanford university i'm i'm re, i'm studying and all you're saying is there can you see it was god's it, it was in the realm of thought okay uh and 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 god said to me the world has the the titles but they don't have the context and the context yeah. so now we uh -huh. are in a space uh catalyst where we can come in and you know because this is the mind of god and if we're god we know how to redesign you know people's thinking patterns processes and you know get it healed and we start to think right and we start to imagine right and when we're in that place of meditation, you know, the download, we take it seriously. We can become inventors. We can become innovators. You know, yeah, never mind implementers, but we need some radical, you know, uh, people to download some radical things. So this is how you're truly, you know, um, became a person that, you know, you have a conversation, you design it, how the mind should think it. So today is really uh, a great day. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the time uh, given for us to have this conversation. I know it won't be the last one. I know both of us are really burdened to see people becoming the best that they can be. Um, and um, I, I, 
I don't know if you want to, uh, I said last word, just tell us what's happening in your institute and, you know, just the plans to expand and, you know, all of that. I mean, that, that would be great too. One of the things that, you know, in this time that God is I've downloaded, I downloaded it in December. It says I should take a message to the world as one of the messages of the sons of God. And, and that message is, it is possible. So this year alone, I've been to London twice to deliver it. I've been to Glasgow, I've been to Ghana, I've been to Kenya. Um, I'm going to Rome um, in, in a few weeks. After Rome, I'm going to- Can I be to... your PA, please? <laughs> Can I be your PA, please? <laughs> After Rome, I'm going to Kigali. After Kigali, I'm going to South Africa. And guess what? Guess what? God is funding it 100%. So nobody's paying for anything. God is funding it. And it is, I deliver excellence. So. So imagine me taking Naira, changing it to pounds and dollars, and, and going to, to deliver to 200, 300, 400 people in each, in each, right? Now, that is the dimension of manifestation that God wants for, for each and every one of us. I love it, this. Everything is possible. Like the woman with the issue of blood, she believed. That was all. Yes. Jesus did not know it. The disciples yes. did not know. She just thought it. She, she just believed. thought it. If only the I can do this. The power of belief is so is so powerful that you can manifest anything with it. And that is my last statement. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. We're like 30 minutes over time. And I don't know if there if there are thankful people here. Um, you know, you're just, just amazing. Um, he's also married to a great, great, you know, super intelligent, super fu uh, fulfilled and accomplished, you know, uh, wife. And by the way, he is Dr. Larry, uh, thank you very much. There's only one catalyst here. One of my favorite persons. Thank you for doing this, you know, uh, with me that, you know, I hope that we can get some feedback from you all you know, to both of us, and of, yes, the, the video will be up there. We just want to to to, to um, uh, believe that there will be a lot of people who are going to take some radical steps to manifest, but certainly that you become a person that understands that when you get that do download from God, you take it to a place of meditation until it becomes you, and that's the realm of incarnation. And once you incarnate it, you're then able to manifest it. And you can demonstrate. You heard how many nations that the catalyst is going to take in the message of it is possible. It's a mindset. It is possible. And it's a lifesaver. It's also a key. Again, thank you so very much, Brav. And um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone who's come. And uh, do get your friends who haven't been to, to go check it out. I think it's Apostle Obi Pax Harry on, on Instagram. And we're going to try our best to download place on on youtube and I, I i think this is a time to multiply good news and let's not help you know um uh, the forces of uh, darkness to multiply their news let's multiply good news and get more people in this space i pray that out of this that there's going to be people who are going to come into radical thinking and believe in their dream believe in your vision step up make some phone calls put some practicality to what god has said to you and yes it is possible thank you very much guys and just watch our space line remind there's a lot we're doing and we hope to pro pro progressively do you know um, so the next conversation we have is with a, an incredible woman, you know, from London. She's done a book as well on the mind. And uh, we also have a um, conversation on leadership. We're going to have conversation also on spirituality, on and entrepreneurship, because we're just trying to see that people can come into that space of being problem solvers in this age, right? From now to December um, 20, 20, 31st, midnight you have you know the, this time to become the very best of you okay thank you very much everybody and catch you on the journey